Hi, Dr. Will Weed here, and today we are going to be uh, talking about the awakening of self. As you can see uh, in that slide presentation, the awakening of self uh, there, so that's where we're going to begin. Now, we've been talking about the two earthlings, um, and so in talking about the two earthlings, this is where that conversation has brought us. It's just the same thought. I'm just moving us down the slide presentation, trying to keep it interesting by uh, introducing a, uh, another topic, basically on the topic that we're going to be discussing today. Now, remember that all of this conversation starts um, in eternity and uh, not on the planet Earth. So we're in Christ in eternity where we are referenced or we're very familiar with referencing to as heaven because we're in the presence of God. And I think that we have been trying to explain how do we end up on the planet? How do we end up separate from God? How do we end up divided? And we are a spirit who has a soul that lives in a body. We've been uh, taking extreme measures to explain that your spirit is connected to the Holy Spirit, which is the voice of God. And your spirit um, is not really recognized at all by your body. What your body recognizes is what we call it the soul. And in the soul we have, I believe, uh, the part of the mind that is divided, and we have the ego, which we have created to mask and keep us from the awakening to our true selves in God, or in Christ. And so we have uh, uh, proceeded through life believing that we're physical and not really paying attention to the spiritual aspect or our spiritual substance, because that's what's important. Um, we've come and we've been teaching about our inheritance in Christ, which is the I amness of God. And so really, a friend of mine has started referring to God as I am. And when you refer to God as I am, that takes God from being out there someplace to being right in your face, I am. The, and God says, I am that I am. So when we start referring to God as I am, it brings us to the singularity of God. And, and that the singularity of God and the wholeness of God, we are a part of. We are a part of his I am-ness. We're not separate from God at all. But how did this happen? Now, you remember the, 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 the serpent, the hubris? Uh, he was swallowing his tail, and in swallowing his tail, um, there was no um, division as of yet. In fact, the uh, slide says the circular serpent preserves the uh, previous memory of eternal union that includes all in one. At this stage, consciousness is undivided, the self still asleep in the perfect circle of unconscious development. What awakens it out of its slumber? What awakens it out of its slumber? What causes the, uh, the eternal circular serpent in which the whole is enveloped in unconscious bliss to lose its grip on its tail and break the circle? What event provokes it to speak? What event provokes it to speak? And I said that it's just the thought came into the mind of Christ. Uh, what would it be like to be um, not in this total happiness, this total bliss? Is, is there an opposite, if you want to say that? But what would it be like, which started all of what we know into happening because the Christ create with his thoughts. The scripture says, as a man thinks, so is he, because it alludes to the power of thought in that statement, as a man thinks, so is he. If you're thinking something, you believe in something, and you're not doubting anything, then you are what you thought. Your thoughts will become your reality. Jesus even alludes to this when he talks about speaking to a mountain where he spoke to a tree, told it to, that no man would eat from it from, from, the, from that point on, and the tree died and withered. Disciples seeing this, and Jesus took that occasion to talk about thoughts. He says, now if you say to that mountain, be you removed and cast into sea, and don't doubt in your heart, you shall have whatever you say. The mind is the heart. If you're not doubting in your mind, if you're fully confident that you have the, the authority to speak to mountains, saying that you are the creator of the mountain, you command it to be wherever it wants to be. But see, the ego got you thinking in a sense of littleness. 
and 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 God is 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 grand in you. He created you grand. There's grandeur that belongs to God that belongs to you. So now I want to highlight the difference between grandeur and grandiosity. Grandiosity is a creation of the ego because with grandiosity it comes because you're trying to overcome your thought about being little or being less than, which you're not. And so little, your thought of being little and then the thought of grandiosity are on the same level. It's created by the ego. It doesn't make any sense. But your grandeur is your inheritance because that is part of you because that's the God in you that's grand. It's not, e it's not egotistical and it's not arrogance. It's just you are. You were created large in spirit. You were created whole in spirit. You completed complete in spirit. Not little, but you're part of the whole. And a part of the whole is, is the whole. And so because you're whole and complete and one with God, there's grandeur that you have. You should never think of yourself as being little and less than. That's egoic. Yeah, it's egoic to think of yourself as being little. See, the ego is always suspicious, or is is, and it, and that suspicion grows into viciousness or competitiveness. There's no competition with you and your brother. You are equals. You are. You see God in Him. You see God's in you. You see your blessing in Him. He sees His blessing in you, and you move from that. No competition, and you accept each other as the child of God. That's that grand greatness that's inside each and every one of us. So we are encouraged and reminded by the Spirit of God of the grandeur that's in each and every one of us. Remember, we are a part of all that is. And being a part of all that is, there's nothing outside of us. And there's no need, there's no war, there's no darkness. But if you believe in littleness, you're going to create grandiosity. But if you know that you are not little, if you know that you are complete, that you're grand, there's grandeur in you. There's no need to be egotistical or arrogant. Then the ego kind of subsides because you're not thinking in little, you're not thinking about lack. You're thinking as being a part of the whole. You, everything that comes from you is love, and it, and love benefits not only yourself but it extends itself to others. You bring others into the same level of enjoyment, of peace, of of, of kindness of gentleness that you are experiencing in the world. You bring them into that peace, into that love, into that joy. You extend it to them. But the things of the ego cannot be extended. It's selfish, self-seeking, and cannot be shared. So it's not that difficult to understand how the self is, de is developing and trying to blind you to the awareness of your inclusion with God as his son. Well, we're going to stop there, and we're going to hopefully pick up with this in our next video. But I just want to leave this thought with you. God has created you in his greatness. And because God has created you in his greatness, you are as he is. He's, you're not him. He created you. You cannot create him, but you can do as he has done. As he is a creator, you can be a creator also. As he is father, you can be father as well. So he wants to extend himself and extend his power and his creations to you and give you full authority over your creations as he has full authority over his creations because his creations are ruled by love and so are yours. And those, those creations you've created are still waiting for you. They're protected by, by God for you and uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, we just want to remind you that God has plans for your life, and none of those plans include defeat.